fast forward and rewind using predictions in SEO. This is me. I'm Rebecca Barbell. Um, I like languages, brains, technology, and how people use all of those together, and bicycles. When I'm not on my bicycle, I am the product marketing manager at OnCrawl, which is a good fit for me because I swim in how people search, how people think, and technology. Um, OnCrawl is the enterprise SEO platform uh, that combines an SEO crawler, log analyzer, native connectors to your SEO data, and elements of technical SEO, machine learning, and data science in order to help you increase your revenues from search engines. So today I'm here to talk to you about crystal balls. And in order to do that, we're going to be looking at this site, transfer-learning.ai. And just a few things about this site. Um, the idea of this site is to bring together recent machine learning articles, more or less as they're published in scholarly journals or on certain sites. Uh, the information about them, their abstract, their themes, subjects, authors, and to connect this to the available machine learning courses online. So to help you know what you need to understand and how to get that knowledge in order to be able to understand these papers. It's a WordPress site. Uh, it has a, about 14 months of back data, so it's a fairly young site. And I believe it has just over 100,000 article pages, of which about 40% are indexed. Um, there is no actual technical, there is no actual SEO on this site. There is basic technical SEO in place, so we know that it works, it can be indexed, and it's intentionally intended to be indexed. But there are no SEO projects in place. There is no one following the SEO performance of this site. It's a sandbox site created by this guy, my coworker, Vincent Terezi, who is extremely fun to work with because he likes to ask questions like, um, can useful BART generated content rank? And then creates a site like this one to see whether or not the answer is yes or no. What we're looking at here is an answer that is probably yes, given the stats of this site, but that's really another story. We'll have to talk about that another time. What we do want to talk about today is how we can use prediction to drive SEO. So in the rest of this talk, we'll be looking at Google Search Console clicks, um, but the theories and the methods can apply to any metric. I'm mostly going to be talking about clicks because it is an easy way to measure Google traffic to your site um, particularly on a site like this one that does not have revenue, does not have, um, I don't think the analytics are even installed on this site. So we'll start there. We can fast forward into the future. That means starting today and speeding up time to see what comes next. We can also rewind, go back to a given date and see what happened then and try again. For example, the pink line on your screen right now is the date at which Vincent's host said to him, you know what, I did not sign up for 100,000 pages on a WordPress site right now with this amount of traffic, so can you stop publishing? And so Vincent made an editorial decision to stop publishing new articles. We also had various events this particular summer. Uh, there were the two parts of the core Google al algorithm update and various other updates this summer that might have affected this site. What we can do with prediction is to back up to when that happened and try again. Here's what we did. So my first advice is don't start from scratch. There are so many ways to look at time series and time series are essentially anytime you have a bunch of data associated with dates or times. Um, I started with OnCrawl Labs. So Labs is our R&D repository where we've cleaned up some of our research, documented it, made sure that it works the way we expected it to across a large variety of types of sites and types of data and made it available to our customers who use the API. 
Um, these are Python notebooks. Um, you can do it in some other language if you'd prefer, um, but it works pretty well. OnCall Labs is intended to be examples from which you can build on, modify, make sure that it works in your case and for your needs. Uh, they are documented and tested, so you know that the little bits and pieces in them can be easily replaced, modified, and that they work. So I wanted to start with the long tail prediction notebook. Um, this is a way to train a time series prediction model to predict future trends. In this particular notebook, there's a focus on long tail or not really long tail because it's more multi-word queries. Uh, I'm not interested in that in particular, but I do like the method. So it lets us initiate the libraries that we need to do this type of calculation. Get your GSC data, split the data into prediction and test sections, predict and check, and graph the results. So it's a good place to start for me. What I did do, I made two major changes. The first was to remove the focus on multi-word queries. Since almost all of the traffic to this site is long tail, I don't need to focus on them. And there's almost no branded queries because there is no brand associated with the site. The next thing I did was I wanted to experiment a little bit because we've seen a lot recently in prediction with profit. So I wanted to see if there was something else I could do. And finally, I ended up trying it with both ways. And you'll see in the next slides, some profit and some cats. CATS, if you're not familiar with it yet, is a um, also offered by Facebook. It's a library that collects different ways to manipulate time series in Python. Um, as an overarching framework, it supposedly, and in some cases it does, makes it easier to use some of these methods to combine them, to test them, to compare them, and work forward. So it has different forecasting models, different detection algorithms, different features, and other ways to manipulate time series. At the time that I created this deck, I think it was in uh, version 0 0.1.0 with commits in the last week to 10 days. So it's a very, very new uh, library. If you're interested in time series and if you're interested in forecasting, it might be worth following. See what's coming up next. First, we're going to try fast forwarding, which is sort of the logical thing to do if we're talking about predicting. When we predict, we predict the future. Caveat here, this is the future according to our prediction. It's an imaginary and often impossible future. Your site migration that you've been planning for the past six months or your CMS change, they're not gonna happen. Things like a global pandemic doesn't exist. The 4,500,000-some Google updates per year, no, nope, they're not in this future either. And your competitor's super campaign that really affects how your search performs, that doesn't exist either. That might be a good thing, but it goes to say that this is not a realistic future. These things happen. So what is this future good for if it can't be real? Well, there are actually a lot of uses for a real, unrealistic future. It's a great way to get used to looking at new sites, uh, new to you sites. They have a passive history, but they also have a place that they're going. And it can be good to see where those next steps might take you before you start doing something. Likewise, it's great for prioritization. Uh, if you see that the general future trend is coasting or even improving, that's a great time to work on in-depth subjects or things that won't lead to immediate change. On the other hand, if you're more or less in free fall, it's a good way to argue for change. It makes the future a lot more tangible, particularly to people who aren't used to SEO, to say, this is where we're going and this is how I want to change it. This is the danger and here's my solution. So the question here is what does the future look like? The future that we don't know yet. So we're placing that yellow line here at today's date and looking forward. In order to do this, we chopped off the last 20 days 
in order to make sure that when we run our machine learning model, it learns something that can predict those 20 days so that we know that we're working with something close enough to reality so that it's usable. And what you're looking at here, this code, is the basic part to do the actual prediction and the graphing. As you can see, we're using profit, not cats here. We found that this fits the data much better with a seasonality trend. And we're going to predict, now that we know that it works based on the past 20 days, we're going to predict the next 30 days. This gives you something like this. If you're not used to looking at these type of graphs, the dark blue line is the predicted, well, is the trend. The light blue area is the variance that you might have, and the black points are the actual data points in this series. That means that the part past to the right of the black points is the section that's predicted. And there are a couple things I'd like to point out here. So we did see that there was sort of a downward tendency this summer. And my worry looking at this is that it would continue. However, the prediction suggests that it probably won't. And this type of sensibility is one of the reasons that it can be interesting to do a prediction rather than to just use your gut instinct. One of the reasons that we see this upward trend is because of seasonality. It was sensitive enough to see that there was a seasonal curve in the end of summer last year and then applied it to this year. This actually makes a lot of sense given the fact that this site is almost entirely academic. So we would expect to see a little bit less traffic during the summer and then an upward tick as classes and academic institutions start again in, this, in the fall. But what if we want to rewind? Rewinding allows us to take a second look at what has happened, uh, things that have occurred in the past that we might not understand fully. Uh, if we know what has happened, it can help us to quantify the impact that something like this might have. Uh, what is the difference between what actually happened and what should have happened? And it can allow us to understand how outside changes might have impacted our site. So those changes that occur outside of our control, that we're not always aware of, when we know that something like that can occur, what is the impact that we've had? The first question to ask is, when did it actually happen? From what date, what, what point in time do we need to run our prediction? We know, for example, that Vincent stopped publishing new articles on May 20th. That's the yellow line. But let's talk about quick clicks. When did that impact the traffic on this site? Did it have an impact on the traffic in this site? So we're going to use cats here and look at the ability to find a change point, a point when what happened before and what happened after this point is not the same. So we're looking at a, we know when he stopped publishing articles. So we're going to look at 30 days before and 30 days after to see if there's anything that changed in that window. And we're going to look for a decrease because as we stated before, we did visually seem to see a decrease in activity. And this is the result. The blue area is the window that we were looking at, and the red is the line that it, the red line is what it found to be a change point. We can also get information about this change point. So we asked it for its start time, which is the 22nd. So two days after he stopped publishing articles, there was a decrease in traffic to the site from Google. And how probable is it that this change point is significant? How do we, are we sure that this is really a change point? Yes, because we are 99.999999 and so on and so forth percent certain that this is a change point. We can also obtain the index, which is the number, if we number the different lines of data by date, this is the number of the line where we have that change point. And we, this is useful now because we can split previous data from that change, from that index point. All the way up to that index point is the training data now. And anything after that, we're going to use to compare to the prediction. 
So now we're going to use cats. Um, we'll use some parameters from profit that you'll recognize from before with the seasonality. Uh, we'll try to fit the prediction. And since we have about three months of data after this date, we'll predict the next 90 days. And this is what we get. The black is the actual data, which stops at that index, at that change point. And the blue is the prediction. We can already see that it doesn't have that downward slope that we were looking at earlier. And let's see what happens if we use it and stretch it out a little bit in, Python, in profit. We have the blue, which is the predicted area. And here we've overlaid a dotted black line with the actual data. By the time we get to the end of the period we've studied, these three months that we predicted, there is a significant looking gap between what was predicted and what actually happened. So what if he hadn't stopped publishing? He would have gained, likely gained, a significant amount of traffic. So let's recap. We are looking at time series. Time series are data organized in accordance with the date or time where things have happened. Time series are great to use like this because there are lots of different ways to look at them, lots of different tools out there. You can use them to forecast the future, to fast forward to see what's happening next. Obviously, this is not going to be your real reliable future. This is going to be your trend that you can impact by your own actions. And you can understand what has happened in the past and quantify what a change means. You can also do any of this a lot better than I did here. Uh, for one, if you're really interested in looking at the difference between what is predicted and what is actual, you might be interested in causal impact. Uh, this is a really fast, not particularly accurate causal impact study on the exact same data, which calculates the cumulative effect of the change compared to the prediction. Or you can keep an eye out on what all of our fellow SEOs are up to in the world of prediction. Uh, there are a bunch of tools and very new tools out there. Uh, not only cats, but Charlie Warnier, for example, um, has been working on Stream Profit, which is super interesting. And Andrew Charlton uh, fairly recently released a free forecasting in sheets. You don't have to even be a person who wants to put their hands in Python or coding in order to work with predictions. You can also join us at OnCrawl and see what things are about. Uh, we do offer a free trial at www.oncrawl.com slash trial. Um, look around, see what data you can get in there, what you can get out, and eventually take a look at the notebooks that we offer to see how you can work on them. And with that, you can continue the conversation with me at at Reb Burbell on Twitter, or check out this deck at slideshow.net slash oncrawl. Thank you very much.